So hi there everybody, Dan McCready, WATD News, and I'm being joined by local actress and my friend Charlotte Ann Dorr, uh, who stars in the um, film, recently released film, yes. Chaps Aquatic, yeah. and we're going to talk with her about the film. So uh, tell us a little bit about the film and your role in it. You play uh, Mary Jo Kopechny's mother. Right? Yes, Mrs. Kopechny. Um, so even though it's only in a couple of scenes, it's a very significant role, because um, it's really kind of, if you like, the conscience part of uh, Ted Kennedy's experience in this. You know, he makes the call, having to make a call to the mother of someone uh, uh, who was in the, in the car during an accident that you were involved in would be a very difficult thing and, and sort of that's, so it's a, a very much a crux, a turning point type of role and there's lots of me crying going boo boo. So. Um, but for those who are not familiar with, when you hear, anyone who's probably over 50 might when you hear the word Chappaquiddick, they're going to think, oh, isn't that that incident where a politician drove off a bridge and left someone for dead in a, in a car? You know, in Massachusetts, people uh, generally know about it, but if you're younger, it's basically something in the 60s. Ted Kennedy, the brother of both Bobby Kennedy and the President Kennedy, JFK. So it, think of this. This is uh, the younger you know, his two brothers are, have both been assassinated. He's around, and so he's already living with the guilt that I'm the one who survived. Why did these two people die? Um, so most likely he's not making good choices. He's uh, involved in politics, and what happens is after an evening at a party, he's driving home with um, someone who he's worked with, Mary Jo Kopechny, and they go off a bridge and the car sinks into the water and it's called Chappaquiddick because that being the name of the bridge kind of thing in the area and uh, and she doesn't make it and he does and it became such an incident there was thoughts that he had been driving the car drunk um, what he ended up um, pleading guilty to is leaving the scene of uh, an accident so what really mm. happened is supposition. People have said there was a third person in the car. People have said he was drunk and he was driving. People have said that she was driving. So this movie does show that, believe that he was drinking and he was driving the car and there was no one else in the car. But the actual, it actually leaves a gap as to what he did. It has him out of the car on the side of the water and her, uh, you know, having swum in a couple of times to try and save her. But, so um, it doesn't definitively answer it? It still doesn't definitively answer it, because I think what um, when I was reading the screenplay as well, which m made me feel that it was okay to do such a piece, because I don't want to do a piece that's going to disrespect the memory of um, a political figure who did so much in later life for the good of the country, um, and was an advocate for many good things, even though he has this kind of mark on his life, something that you could never, like, how do you live with that? You know, even even if it's like, I survived and they didn't, even if he hadn't been at fault in any fashion, even if he had immediately called the cops, but they hadn't found her alive, even if he hadn't been driving, even if he hadn't been drinking, like, to be the one who survives can often create guilt in a lot of people. But in later life, he did so much for politically, uh, you know, to try and advocate for those who are less fortunate, who needed ad advocacy for good things. So I didn't want to do a piece that was going to disrespect someone who's not around to even stand up and say, wait a minute. Um, mm -hmm. But I feel that this movie, by leaving some gaps, by the way it's written, it, it leaves it up to an audience to kind of make a decision themselves and I think that's what good art is in the sense that it presents something but it doesn't it's not didactic one way or another and I think depending on your political viewpoint what you already thought happened you're gonna have a different perspective of the piece I seeing it I do think he seems a little bit more distant and a little less sympathetic than I felt reading it um, However, there's still all these questions that are unanswered and still things that are left open and it still shows him being kind of part of this spin cycle around it and, and him having a conscience. And I think my character plays a lot in him having some of that conscience. 
And one of the things that um, we were talking about with this movie is that it's not so much about the incident itself, although it certainly does talk about that, but it's a lot of focus on what happened afterwards, okay. how the, ma the political machinations, how the family, the Kennedy family had was trying to deal with the political aftermath of yeah. that and really focuses on that part of it. Yeah, it, it, it does. There's a lot of scenes where you've got a room full of like male politicians because it's set in the 60s when most of the people with the control and the power were male and they're all just talking in these smoky rooms. I mean visually it's stunningly photographed. Um, the imagery and it was all filmed um, except for some of the water scenes that were filmed in Mexico in the tank that filmed Titanic but the majority of all the locations were filmed here in Massachusetts. They hired um, locals for the background and the great thing is some of the featured backgrounds still got listed in the credits which is really great he, um, and, and then they hired um, over 50 um, locals for speaking roles so that they could get the real authenticity of the Massachusetts accent and I know I don't have yes, an accent. Yes, I was, I was going to bring that up. Um, <laughs> So, so what part of uh, Boston are you from originally? <laughs> I'm not. I'm from England originally. Oh, okay. But the character I was playing is not from Boston. Uh, Mr. Kopechny is not from Boston. So when I, the irony is, I went in for the audition and I did my, what I call my fake American accent at the audition. And they were like, you sound too Boston. Can you like, <laughs> and I was like, wow, maybe I could get a Boston part one day. <laughs> if I sound, my A's were just like Boston A's, um, when I, uh, rather than the more subtle kind of um, Philadelphia, New York type of, uh, image but the thing is when I had done research for my audition I'd actually managed to find a small clip uh, uh, of Mrs. Kopechny speaking at a press conference so I had really tried to kind of copy her mannerisms uh, even before I went into the audition because it was like this would be a cool part uh, you yeah, know and when I looked at her I was like I don't look exactly like her but there's the way she smiled in some of those interviews I'm like that's me, that's me. So when I see myself, when I saw myself on the, the um, film, I was like, I don't look exactly like her, but I can see why they cast me. And also the man they cast looked exactly like her, Tim Jackson, who's another local actor uh, and formerly a drummer. He's an excellent guy, filmmaker. Um, and he's slightly shorter than the original Mr. Kopechny, so they needed a Mrs. Kopechny that would match his height and still look like we were a couple. Um, so that was an advantage for me. <laughs> so now, I wanted to ask you too, because obviously this movie has been getting reactions yeah. from the two fa from, I would say the two camps involved, of course, there are the Kennedys and the people who support them, and the Kopechny family. Yeah. What, what have you heard from both sides? Um, I haven't heard too much. I know on Facebook some of the, the Kopechny family's uh, relations who are related have felt that it represented, it told a story that needed to be told. Um, uh, you know, the idea that Mary Jo hasn't just disappeared into the storyline that they're bringing up that, that fact. Um, but when I was researching it, um, Again, now there's probably more stuff written because more stuff is coming out of the, the, the woodwork, if you like, more stories. But when I was reading it, and also at the time, for example, the time that my character is represented, like at the funeral, I really do believe, and from the interview that I watched of them, they did not want their daughter's body to be exhumed, which could have added to more information to help choose one. For them, they were so much in favor of the message uh, and the, uh, they were supporters of the Kennedy, they knew their daughter was a supporter of Kennedy um, and it was almost they, from my interpretation of what I know having never met them but from what I read and re research and the way I played it was at the time A they were in shock but B they couldn't think badly of Ted so uh, there's a line that's it's kind of very quiet in the mix uh, but it was in the original um, screenplay and then it got cut and then on the day I just said it and naturally and it's they didn't cut it from the final edit but it's very quiet in the mix where I'm saying thank you for trying to save our daughter and I really do think that's a, to me that's kind of important because I was playing as if they didn't blame and there was also another line where they're in the background and someone's saying they don't blame you 
and I think at the time of the funeral, what, what might have happened over years of thought and not being in the shop, but at the time, I, I think they couldn't even imagine that he would have, you know, been that, uh, you know, just like not tried, not tried to do everything in his possible ability to save the daughter. Um, and, uh, but I, I think um, from what I've seen that the family, those related to the Kopechnys are glad the story is being brought to the forefront and, and uh, people are starting to question, well, really, what did, what should he have done? Um, and, uh, and then there's uh, people on the right who are like, it's about time we all knew he was, uh, you know. Yeah. And, and then there's those on the left who are saying this is a representation of what's going now on now in politics with things being covered up regardless of what the situation or what the politics of the person involved, but that idea of cover up, of glossing over, of, of not being straightforward, of not finding the truth, you know, and, uh, uh, and um, to me, when I watch the film, it's still about humanity. It's about someone totally confused, totally lost, like made a mistake. It's like when you're a teenager or when you're really young, making the craziest, horriblest mistake you could ever make that makes someone suffer and like not knowing how to dig yourself out. So it, 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 even though it might not be per se a favorable telling of Ted Kennedy, mm. it's not necessarily what some might call a conservative hit job either. Um, I, I definitely don't, reading the screenplay, I don't feel it was. Uh, knowing the people who, you know, uh, John Curran and uh, Jason Clark and their politics, I don't think... I don't think it would have been made if that was the goal. It's a piece of art that allows people from both sides to get something out of it. And that, to me, you don't... If you die uh, too didactic one way or another, you're not helping people discover and, and even be interested in discovering what might have really happened. I feel that there's enough gaps in it that it still doesn't answer all the questions. It will just start the conversation again so that... Um, relations of the Kopechnys can then say, look, we need to have this conversation, we need to find out really what went on. I mean, it's difficult now because people who could maybe give us information are not around to reveal that. Although, I'm, I'm supposing that there's a chance um, Ken, Ted did, didn't know anyway. I mean, you think, if you've ever been in a car accident, right after it happens, you're kind of in a shock even if you're not physically hurt. And that, including being underwater, if he did dive down a couple of times, which in this movie it looks like he's wet, but you don't know, and then you have him coming back with his friends and they dive down. I don't want to give it all away, but, I mean, it's not really giving any of it away because it's, it feels like it's, one of the first reviews was a sort of documentary, but it's not really because it still leaves lots of holes. There's lots of artistic license to it, um, I think. But they've tried to research and allow enough flexibility so that people can watch it and um, get something from it. All right. Well, unfortunately, we are going to have to wrap it up here. But I just wanted to uh, thank you so much for coming in and speaking with us. And uh, we really do appreciate it. So thank okay. you so much. Thank and the you. best of luck with the film. Thank you. So this was Dan McCready speaking with Chappaquiddick, Attic <laughs> Chappaquiddick, <laughs> Chappaquiddick actress Charlotte Andor, Dan McCready, WATD News.